Welcome back guys. Uh, we are talking about how to analyze those CSI and NET questions and we are talking about the group B of CSI and NET where most of the questions are going to be memorizing type of questions. That means you need to know the direct answer of the question otherwise it is difficult for you to solve the group B part of CSI and NET question paper. Now what we are doing here we try to analyze those questions so that we can solve those questions pretty easily right because once you analyze those questions you can find a pattern or the type of questions that are being uh, conducted it over over time right so once you know that it will be super easy for you uh, to go uh, and look for this uh, uh, questions okay so let's let's begin with that so let's uh, so let me take my pen yeah okay so here it is one minute so it's kind of frozen in this case one minute so so let's begin with this part of the group B and, and in this video actually we'll be talking about uh, majorly the genetics section and we'll be covering the, those questions that may come from genetics. So it's obviously about group B and it is about genetics. Okay, so let's begin. So first question is, in a certain genetic cross, one of the 16 proportion of progeny shows mutant phenotype. It means, what does it mean? Now, it, it's telling that if a normal genetic cross is being conducted and 16 offsprings are there, then one out of the 16 offspring are kind of mutant. Right? They are mutant. That means they are having a mutation in their gene. Right? So, what is the, uh, it, what, what that means? First thing is that two independent assorting genes are involved for the trait. Second thing, two independently assorting duplicate genes are involved for the trait. Uh, involved. Third, two linked genes are involved for the trait. And fourth is two independent segregating alleles are responsible for for the trait. Now remember, segregating allele. Now for for this to answer, you can see in all those options they provide independent assorting genes, independent assorting duplicate genes, independent assorting segment of alleles. So what does this independent assortment means? You need to learn what is this independent assortment, right? So that this is very very important, right? So independent assortment is obviously a rule for classical genetics conducted by Mendel, Gregor Mendel. And he has suggested two, two rules. Remember, law of segregation and law of independent assortment. Now, the law of independent assortment is telling us if you are carrying the cross between two individuals and if you are using uh, two different properties. For example, if you look a flower, flower color, and we, if we look, uh, look at the mm, uh, height of the plant, if we choose these two characteristics and if we cross two individuals using these two characteristics, the outcome or those genes for the flower color and the gene for the height of the plant will separate, se will segregate during the cell division. They usually say segregate, we all know. During the meiosis process, they are segregated. So during this cell division, they will segregate independently. That means the presence of flower color gene will not affect height gene and the presence of height gene will not interfere with the expression of the flower color. So those things are having a barrier between themselves. They express separately in the different way. That's called the independent assortment of genes, right? Now, in this case, what what is going to be the cause of this one in a 16 mutant form that is being uh, showed up? Now, usually, it's kind of thing. You need to know a slight knowledge of what is independent assortment. That's why this term is important. So, this type of questions, I term them as term memorizing or TM category of questions. So you need to memorize some terms, otherwise you can't get the answer. Now once you know the term, but still it's not done yet, what you need to do more, you need to think for what is going to be the answer. Now if, we, if, if it is two independent assorting genes, then it shouldn't be any kind of mutant, right? But mutation can arise only in one situation. If those two genes are duplicate genes of each other, in that case only mutation can occur in one in 16 you can see one in 16 mutation is very very high degree of mutation right so so that's why uh, the only reason for this mutation should be the duplicate genes of the independent assorting genes right so option two as i know is going to be the correct answer right but for answering this question you need to know this terminology or which is the independent assortment right now let's move on to the next question now, a plasmid copy number achieved by plasmid encoding control elements and regulate the inhibition of uh, re replication step. For example, in, in, in uh, stringent plasmid pras protein, rep A dimerize and binds to origin of replication and do not allow replication more than once. 
what mutation may convert this stringent mode of replication into plasmid into relaxed one now you can see here two different mode of replication for a plasmid is provided one is the stringent mode in the stringent mode rep a protein comes and rep a uh, attach with another rep a to form a dimer and then they sit on to the origin of replication and they do not allow the replication more than once right but normally uh, the stringent mode of replication in plasmid can be converted into a relaxed mode of replication so what's the situation when they convert the stringent mode into the relaxed mode so you need to know uh, this whole thing what is stringent mode of replication what is relaxed mode of replication a little little bit otherwise you can't answer this question so it require it tests your knowledge a little bit so i call them as knowledge memorizing type or came type of questions now here you can see what is the cause that over expression in a rape protein uh, can overexpression of rape protein do that? Now the answer: overexpression of rape protein will block uh, the synthesis of several uh, replication of the DNA. So it shouldn't be uh, any option. So we can cross this one straight away. Now the second thing: mutation in rape gene in dimerization domain. Now because we know that if this is the plasmid, it's it's completely not only knowledge but it's also conceptual question. So it's it's entirely conceptual. If you if you are very much understanding about what what you are dealing with and if you know a basic idea of replication repair and recombination and all these things the basics of this you need to be very clear if you know the basics this conceptual questions are just for you you can solve it in no time so you can see here that if this is the plasmid this is the origin of replication dimer of rep will come and bind now this rep dimer when binds it there is no replication so definitely for being uh, for for the conversion of this plasmid into a relaxed form relaxed form what we need to do we need to put those those uh, we don't need to put those rep proteins because if the rep proteins are there there shouldn't be any conversion so there need to some some kind of change in the rep a dimerization right so there is something to deal with the rep a dimerization right so here you go the mutation in rep a gene in dimerization domain the mutation in rep a other than the dimerization domain because we know there is something to deal with the dimerization of rep a for this for this to happen so we can say yes option 2 is going to be a correct answer for this question so we can put option 2 a correct answer there i call this type of question knowledge memorizing on conceptual memorizing type of questions but uh, as you know, if you have the basics understanding, you can answer this question pretty easily. It won't test your mug up thing, it will check your knowledge. Now the third question, the spontaneity of mutation means. Now that's a kind of direct question. You need to know what is spontaneity of mutation. That's also a term. Because spontaneity mutation is definitely a term you need to learn when you are studying mutation. Now mutation in absence of exogenous mutagen. Mutation directly proportional to presence of mutagen, mutation inversely proportional to the presence of mutagen, mutation at inappropriate time. The spontaneity means mutation in absence of exogenous mutation. Spontaneity means obviously uh, you can't explain a thing that is spontaneous. That means that thing is occurring without being influenced of anything else at a particular time. Right? So there shouldn't be any influence of it. So once you understand what is spontaneity stand for, you know that there shouldn't be any influence. So mutation directly proportional to the presence or inversely proportional, these things you can easily uh, exclude out. So what remain, it remains mutation in absence of exogenous mutagen and mutation at the inappropriate time. Now in this case, obviously, mutation in absence of exogenous mutagen because there shouldn't be any amount of influence. So option one should be the correct option. And for this to happen, you need to learn a little bit knowledge plus you need to know some terms. So it's a term memorizing type of questions. Once you know it, you know, yes, option one is the correct answer for this question. Let's move on to the last one. In an organism, if number of linkage group is 12, then the number of haploid set in chromosome is. So it, it, this is a question which completely check your knowledge again, right? Because uh, otherwise, knowledge and concept, this is also purely conceptual question, right? And I am telling you that you can see in more of this other other uh, other than genetics that biochemistry, mole bio, and all these things they got, they are going to put more memorizing questions in the group B. But in genetics, genetics is mostly part of for concepts. So you need to learn basic concepts of genetics. You need to be a firm understanding of genetics to solve these questions, guys. So in an organism, if number of linkage group is twelve, so you need to know what is linkage group. And once you know the linkage group number is twelve, then the number of haploid set of chromosomes. You may think that what is going to be it. If you don't know, you may think that there is a relation between 24 and 12 with 12. So you may think that there is something to be answered from option 1 and 2. 
but without knowing these questions you can't you shouldn't attend these questions actually if you don't know but in this case we know that in, if linkage group is number 12 then obviously the haploid set of chromosomes should be uh, number 12 in that case so option 1 is the correct answer in this case also and this is a conceptual question or CM type of questions remember and for this also you need to learn a little bit terminology so learn terminologies guys and for genetic section read and make and build your concept otherwise you can't get through genetics for CSI net so that's kind of it guys and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.